Welcome to our Wednesday service. Uh, I hope that all your Christmas preparations and plans are, are going well. Hopefully you've got most, if not all, of your shopping done. Uh, Christmas will soon be here. And uh, we'll be celebrating the birth of uh, the Son of God uh, there in Bethlehem. So I wanted just to continue here tonight. Um, we're continuing the book of Acts. In fact, we're going to be in Acts, the 13th chapter. Uh, tonight, we're going to see some interesting things of what was going on and what was happening. When we left, Saul and Barnabas, they had uh, left then headed toward uh, Jerusalem. And they were there in Jerusalem. And we're going to see some interesting things that were happening here. Now, when they were in the church that was at Antioch, certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simon, that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, and also uh, uh, Manon, which had been brought up from Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. And they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work wherein to I have called them. Now let's stop right there for just a moment. Saul and Barnabas, they were called of God to carry forth the gospel uh, and really to the uttermost parts of the world and they were gonna take the gospel a tremendous amount of miles in their lifetime. They were going to be talking to a lot of different people. They were gonna be uh, uh, have opportunities to minister to a lot of people from a lot of different places because some of the places they were going to be in was going, certainly going to be uh, uh, some commerce cities and towns in which a lot of trading went on. And any time you, you saw a heavily concentration of commerce or trading going on, you certainly were going to find uh, that there was a lot of nationalities of people there, a lot of diversity. And that's exactly what was happening uh, now. And as, as they were there at Antioch, the Holy Spirit uh, led the leadership there at Antioch uh, to, uh, uh, to, to make a decision to separate, to, to get Paul and Silas and to send them away and send them on their way accomplishing what God had called on them to do. Now, the comfortable thing to do was to stay right there where everyone knew them and to simply do ministry. Uh, but uh, God had, different, had a different idea. His idea was for them to send them on the way and they were going to grow. There was going to be, not going to be, there was nowhere that uh, Paul was going to do ministry and, uh, and that Barnabas was going to do ministry. Uh, there was nowhere that they were going to really be comfortable. They were going to be have some difficulties and struggles, and they were they certainly were going to have to lean on the on the presence of the Holy Spirit to direct their paths. So this is what had happened now in the early part of, of uh, first part of chapter thirteen, and verse five says, "And when they had fasted and prayed, now listen, they they were very cautious to not." just send them out. They needed to fast for the purification, to get their minds where, and hearts where they needed to be. And then they certainly were in that prayerful attitude. And I think it was, uh, certainly it was a continuous and steadfastly, that attitude of prayer that they had. So when they had fasted and prayed, and they laid their hands on them, they sent them away. Only after they had prayed for them and let them know of the love and care and concern that they had. So that's what was, was happening now in Saul and Barnabas' life. So we're seeing that, that here we're seeing what's going on and what's happening. Now, let's think about here. Uh, let's go on now to verse 4, if we may, in this chapter. So they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost. Now, not by leaders, but sent by the, by the Holy Spirit. They were sent out 
being directed and called by him, by the Holy Spirit. So being called by him and sent forth, they departed into Cilicia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. Uh, we know where Cyprus is, right off of, uh, of, of Italy. And when they were at Salmas, they preached the word of God in the synagogues. Now I want you to notice that as they went forth, one of the first things they were going to look for, where is the place of worship? The synagogue. Where do, where do men and women and where do they go to worship? Uh, that's going to be the focal point. That's where you're going to find individuals that have a thirst and a hunger for the gospel. And this is what Saul was to, going to take uh, 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 to them. So let's continue on just a little bit here. And uh, so here they are. And uh, they have found this and they went there. And they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. And they had also John uh, to their ministry. To minister also. Now, this is a setting. They're beginning to lay a foundation of the work that God has called them to do and the Holy Spirit has led them to do. Now, I want us to continue on just for a little bit here. And we're going to see here uh, that uh, there was uh, some things that were going on here. And when they had gone through uh, the aisle into Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bargesus, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, who called for Barnabas and Saul, and they desired to hear the word of God from them. In other words, this individual that of some uh, somewhat of authority was here, and uh, he was uh, certainly uh, desiring. He said so. He said was to hear the word of God from them. Now let's go on a little bit further and let's see exactly what had happened. But Elimus, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. In other words, the sorcerer, or this other person, he literally wanted to stop the gospel from being preached, let alone to any high authority to where that person might be swayed to receive Jesus Christ as the personal Savior of theirs. So the sorcerer really felt uh, maybe competition or maybe some jealousy there because uh, this uh, uh, person of authority wanted to hear the word of God from uh, Saul and Barnabas. Let's go on a little bit further here as we begin to look here. Then Saul, who also is called Paul. Now, here the scripture identifies Saul as Paul. He is filled with the Holy Ghost, the, the scripture says. And he set his eyes on me. You know, there are things in which that all of us that we get in situations and we look a person in the eye, we can tell what's going on with them. And this is exactly what was happening. Now, let's go on a little bit further here. So Paul now has been identified uh, as Paul, not Saul. And uh, he has put his eyes on him. And he said, O full of all subsidy and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy 
of all righteousness. Wilt thou not create or cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Now Paul's looking in the eyes of this, might as well call him the evil one, this sorcerer. This one really that felt threatened when the word of God was coming to his town or city. And uh, Paul was not afraid. Uh, we later would see where Paul was, uh, was so to where he said, uh, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. He, he was not afraid to sacrifice himself for the name of Jesus. So he was looking at this man and he called it the way it was as he looked him straight in the eye. Paul wasn't going to say anything about him when he wasn't present. So he said it straight to his face here. Now look, look at the next verse. Look at verse 11. And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind. Wow. Now let's look. Think about it. Paul now is telling him, you're going to be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. Wow. This had to be a very uh, scary thing for the sorcerer. Or maybe he was just, he felt as though he was, Paul was mocking him. So he says, and immediately there fell on him a mist. And not only a mist, he said there was a darkness. And he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. In other words, just exactly what Paul had said you're going to, you're blind. You're going to be blind for a season. And uh, he wanted somebody to help him and he was searching in the darkness of blindness that, that now had set in on his life. The Holy Spirit was not going to let the sorcerer get in the way of the gospel being preached. Because keep in mind, uh, there they were at Antioch. They were they had prayed for Saul and Barnabas, and the Holy Spirit told them to separate them uh, from them and to send them forth to carry the, out what God had called them to do. So now they, are, they have encountered a sorcerer, the sorcerer standing toe-to-toe -to, -toe to Paul, and Paul simply tells him, uh, being led of the Spirit, that God is gonna, going to cause you to not be able to see for a season. Let's go on just a little bit further here now as we see. Let's look at verse 12. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, here's what the next word is. I want you to pay close attention to the next word. When this uh, person with authority, they called him a deputy, when he saw that the sorcerer now was blind and had to be led away, uh, he, uh, he believed, look at that next word, when he saw what had been done, this deputy believed, being astonished, and look what he was astonished at, the doctrine of the Lord that uh, Paul and Barnabas were teaching, and their boldness, one of the things I think in Paul's life and in Barnabas' life, when they came, not themselves spoke, but the Holy Spirit spoke, and it spoke with such a tremendous boldness that was beyond anything they had ever seen or heard. And it came with such power and such authority. So here we begin to see. Now, we uh, look at verse 13. Now, when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos, they came to Pergamum, and John, departing from them, returned to, to Jerusalem. So let's stop right there, and we'll stop here with verse uh, 13 here today. They had been separated by the, from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit said, uh, we need you to go, and we've got a mission. We've got something for you to accomplish. So they were sent on their way. Paul and Barnabas. Here they were. They went. 
they encountered a sorcerer they encountered who was befriended by a deputy or a higher ranking official there and the encounter and the struggle ensued and being led of the spirit Paul, Paul told the sorcerer as he looked him in the eye he said your eyesight's going away for a season you're going to be blind and instantaneously it happened and the deputy saw what had happened and he immediately scripture says he believed now we're seeing where John John left and went back to Jerusalem but here we had uh, Paul and Barnabas left we're gonna see where some of the journeys that they take and, and the journeys of the early church when we pick up here uh, the next time but may God bless you and keep you and I know these are busy times for everyone uh, may God keep you safe and protect you as you go about and travel here and there put that hedge of protection around you pray with me for just a moment if you would Heavenly Father I thank you Lord for this day and the blessings you granted to us and the approaching time in which that we celebrate the birthday of Jesus Christ Lord, help us to never, ever take that for granted, but to always know that really what Christmas is really all about, it is all about Jesus Christ. So Lord, help us to always keep that at the very forefront of our lives. Watch after each person, take care of them, and may this just be a blessed, happy, and joyous, safe time of the year for us. Father, we ask all these things in the precious name of Christ. Amen. May God bless you. See you next week.